was really dark, smoky. There was about two stages and four girls dancing. It feels strange. This is not, I'm not supposed to be here. What was supposed to be an adventure for a bright teen far from home took a dark turn inside a Detroit strip club. I was just scared. No speak English, zero. There's no words I can say anything. They did write me down how you ask, do you want to dance? Tens of thousands of young people make the journey each year. They flock to beach towns, tourist hotspots, and take jobs in restaurants, hotels, theme parks. They make money, make friends, explore America, and after a few months, return home. Except that's not always what happens. In startling numbers, the youth who come here are being exploited, even abused, while the government agency that opens America's borders to them seems to look the other way. The State Department is responsible for the program. George Collins is an inspector with the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office in the Florida Panhandle, where the exploitation of temporary workers from overseas has exploded over the last decade. They end up getting ripped off so badly that I'm afraid the lesson they take home is in America, the little guy gets screwed. The State Department issued J-1 visa for foreign students is one of the most often abused. That's because the department relies on private companies, known as sponsors, to recruit the students and set them up with short-term jobs in the U.S. Those sponsors then farm out the work to third-party brokers, middlemen, unregulated by the government. Officials at state who declined interview requests routinely rubber stamp the applications from J-1 visa candidates. Some students arrive to find the jobs they were promised by the brokers don't exist. For others who have work, often the middlemen take most of the pay. I have seen where people have gotten paychecks that literally say zero dollars that they're going to get paid after deductions. They open paycheck and say, like, zero, you have zero money, and he's like, why you give us this? We found Yevgen Kondratenko, an 18-year-old J-1 visa student from Ukraine, living in a dirty, bug-infested apartment in Destin, Florida. The hospitality labor company that provided Kondratenko and four other foreigners with jobs deducted $75 each week from their pay for rent. The stench of rotting food in the refrigerator left over from previous tenants was inescapable, even though one of the other fees the company deducted from Kondratenko's pay was for cleaning services. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm scared to even touch it. I moved to here, this place, I never lived there before, and i like, I want to see it clean. Overcrowding is common. In a nearby complex, we found five Turkish students on J-1 visas, three women and two men sharing a one-bedroom, one-bathroom apartment. One student told us she was completely disappointed in the program and wanted to go home. But there's much more to J-1 abuse than working for little pay and living in dirty, overcrowded conditions. The AP found students on J-1 visas working in strip clubs and not always willingly. I thought never would happen to me. I thought I was smart and playing safe, but not really. Katya asked us not to use her real name or show her face because she still fears for her life. In 2004, a pair of Ukrainian men recruited her for a job at a restaurant in Virginia Beach. But when she arrived, the men told her the job fell through. Instead, they sent her to Detroit and forced her to work as a stripper at this nightclub. The pair threatened Katya and her family back in Ukraine, telling her she had to dance to pay off tens of thousands of dollars. They said she owed them for arranging her J-1 visa. I said, that's not what I signed here for. It's not right. Well, he said, well, you owe me the money. and I don't care how I'm going to get out for you. If I'm going to have to sell you, I'll sell you. Bridget Carr is a lawyer who has worked with Katya. She's also director of the Human Trafficking Clinic at the University of Michigan Law School. If she didn't bring in a minimum, let's say it was $500, the traffickers would be very angry. And sometimes that anger was taken out through, um, you know, they took out their anger through physical violence. Six nights a week for months, Katya was forced to strip, handing over all the money she made to the men. They held her captive even after she paid them the money they claimed she owed. Each week, Katya says, one of the men forced her to have sex with him. He would say, like, well, we have a relationship with you. I love you. 
In 2009, the AP asked the State Department for a list of complaints related to the J-1 visa program. More than a year later, the department told the AP that no list existed. Officials at State declined multiple requests to be interviewed as part of this investigation. Advocates like Carr question whether the program is simply beyond repair. If we can't responsibly administer the program in a way that keeps these kids, I mean, let's say these are kids, safe, then, then we shouldn't be doing it. Nine months after arriving in the U.S., Katja escaped her captors with the help of a patron she met at the club where she was forced to work. She agreed to testify against the men who later pled guilty to charges including involuntary servitude. The man who Katja says raped her is scheduled to be released from prison next summer. Jason Bronis, The Associated Press.